ChatGPT is quickly becoming an indispensable tool at work. Whether you need help brainstorming new ideas, want to edit the style and tone of a piece of writing, or just need to quickly draft some social media posts, ChatGPT is the go-to resource for busy knowledge workers like us. And all you need to do is give ChatGPT a good question or a prompt to get started. But what if an AI assistant could handle the entire task with a prompt alone? With the new Zapier plugin for ChatGPT, we're closer to that future than ever. Today, I'll show you how to use Zapier's ChatGPT plugin and explore some of the early possibilities with this beta feature. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use AI and automation tools to help people create more time in their everyday work. If you'd like to see more tips for tools like Zapier, OpenAI, and more every single week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Zapier plugin for ChatGPT step-by-step. -step. So let's get started. First, I'll give you a brief demo of the Zapier ChatGPT plugin and a quick overview of how it works. Then we'll take a close look at each step of the process. To use the Zapier plugin for ChatGPT, you'll need to have both a Zapier account and a ChatGPT Plus account. Then you'll need to add the Zapier plugin to ChatGPT and connect your accounts together. Next, you'll be prompted to create an action. You'll have to make an action here for anything that you want to automate with Zapier and ChatGPT. Otherwise, ChatGPT won't be able to perform the task. Once you've saved an action, you can send a relevant message to ChatGPT4 and it will perform the automated action. Just make sure the plugins are enabled and Zapier is selected. That's how the Zapier plugin for ChatGPT works in a nutshell. Next, I'll explain each of these steps in more detail. But first, I just want to note that this plugin is still in early beta. In its current state, it's a very interesting piece of tech with a ton of potential, but right now, it has some pretty limited use cases in the real world. Ultimately, all of the actions that you can perform with the plugin can also be performed with the normal Zapier automations. Language models like ChatGPT generally can't execute actions beyond generating and formatting text. With this plugin, ChatGPT is relying entirely on Zapier to automate tasks in your other apps. As such, this plugin doesn't really give you access to any new abilities yet, just a different way to access the same abilities. In most cases, you'll be able to build more reliable and scalable automations with traditional Zaps directly in Zapier, particularly if you're building an automation for an entire team and not just personal use. However, the plugin still represents a lot of exciting possibilities. If you're a builder like me or lead your own agency, it's definitely worth checking out. And if there are any tasks that you're relying on ChatGPT for every single day, like drafting messages or summarizing long pieces of text, you may find that the Zapier plugin offers a more convenient workflow for you. With all that in mind, let's dive in and take a closer look at each step of setting up and using this plugin. First, you'll need to have a Zapier account and a ChatGPT Plus subscription. Unfortunately, a free ChatGPT account won't work. The ChatGPT Plus plan will grant you access to beta features like this plugin or the ability to browse with Bing. It also gives you access to the GPT-4 model. GPT-4 is a more advanced language model compared to 3 or 3.5. It delivers much more creative and convincing responses. However, it does tend to be a bit slower and OpenAI will limit you to 25 messages for ChatGPT-4 every three hours. If you don't have a ChatGPT Plus account, go to chat.openai.com and click on your account in the bottom left and sign up for Plus. Based on the current pricing, it will run you 20 bucks a month and you'd be surprised how much this little robot can do for you. Once you've upgraded your account, go back to chat.openai.com and start a new chat. You should now have the option to select ChatGPT4 as your language model. When you mouse over GPT4, a drop-down menu will appear with a few options default, browse with Bing, and plugins. If you don't see these options, you'll need to adjust a setting. Click on the account in the bottom left and select settings. Select beta features and enable plugins. You can also enable browse with Bing if you'd like, but it's not necessary for using the Zapier plugin. Then return to the chat and hover over GPT-4 again. Click on Plugins to allow ChatGPT to incorporate plugins like Zapier into its responses. At the top of your chat window, you'll see a message that either shows your currently selected plugin or will say no plugins enabled if you haven't added any plugins yet. Click on this message, then choose Plugin Store. 
search for Zapier, or select it from the list here. Then, log into your Zapier account if you haven't already signed in, and authorize it to connect to your ChatGPT account. The plugin will then immediately take you to an Actions screen. This is where you'll see any Zapier actions that you've created for ChatGPT to use. You can also use this page to create new actions, or edit and delete your existing actions. This action page that Zapier opens up is currently the only place you can manage your actions. There's no menu item for it in Zapier's main app yet. If you need to find this page again, which you will, just go to nla.zapier.com slash openai slash actions, or you could check out the resources board linked below where we've saved that long URL to a convenient pin. Let's create a new action so we can set up a task for ChatGPT and Zapier to perform. From the action screen, click on add a new action. Then you'll need to search for the automated action that you want Zapier to set up for ChatGPT. This is a little different than your typical Zap setup. Instead of picking an app and then picking an action, you'll have to search for both at once. For this example, I'll set up a simple action that lets ChatGPT send emails through my Gmail account. So I'll search for Gmail send email and select the appropriate action once it appears in the results. Once you choose the action you want to use, you'll need to configure it. Zapier will display a small selection of the most important options for configuring this action, but you can click on show all options to see the rest. For every field, you'll essentially have the option of providing a pre-configured piece of data or letting AI guess what you want to use. How you fill in these fields will largely depend on the action you want to set up. You'll need to consider the scope of what you want to do with the Zapier plugin. For instance, if I want to set up an action to always send emails to the same recipient, I could provide the recipient's email address here. But if I want to be able to ask ChatGPT to send emails to anyone, it's better to let AI guess for this field. I'd recommend trying out a few different settings to see what works best for your scenario. While the plugin is in beta, any tasks it uses won't count against your total in Zapier, so you should feel free to experiment with the plugin. However, the messages will still count against your three hour message limit in ChatGPT. For now, I'll stick with a simple setup. I'll just connect my Gmail account and let AI guess for the rest of the values. That way, I can use my prompt to tell ChatGPT who to send the email to, who to CC, and what the content should be. To finish up setting up an action, just click on Enable Action. If you want to edit or delete any of your actions, just return to the Actions page. Again, that URL is saved in the resources board in the video's description. Now that we have an action enabled, let's send a prompt and try it out. First, make sure that you're using ChatGPT4 with plugins enabled and that Zapier plugin is selected. Then send a message that's relevant to the action you've configured. For example, I'll send a prompt that says, send an email to xraytutorials at gmail.com. Ask X-Ray to schedule a meeting next week to discuss our next Zapier tutorial. The tone of the email should be professional and friendly. Now, ChatGPT will start processing its response. It can take a few seconds for it to get going, and you should see this message about using Zapier at least once. Wait a moment for ChatGPT to finish composing its response. The exact text will vary, but if you've asked it to perform an action that you've configured, it should tell you that it's prepared the action with Zapier but you need to review its output and confirm it first. Click on that link that ChatGPT provides and check its work. You can edit any of its choices and click on run once you've determined it's ready to execute. This message looks good, so I'll click on run. When I check the X-Ray content inbox, I can see the email that Zapier and ChatGPT just sent. In many cases, ChatGPT will offer to set up an automation in Zapier to automate the task in the future. Unfortunately, this isn't quite as useful as it sounds. The Zapier plugin for ChatGPT can actually create a new Zap for you, but it won't be able to reliably configure all of the steps. You'll usually need to fill in all of the fields and fix errors that it made during the setup. Hopefully Zapier will continue expanding this plugin. It would be awesome to build Zaps entirely with natural language prompts. For now, it can really only create basic placeholder Zaps. That covers all the basics of using the Zapier plugin in ChatGPT.
But before we wrap up this tutorial, I just want to show you one more thing. We've already seen how the plugin handles a single action in prompt, but you can also set up several actions and have ChatGPT draw on all of them as needed. Let's see what that looks like in practice. I'll quickly create two additional actions, one to find a file in my Google Drive and another to send a direct message to my Slack account. Now, I'll ask ChatGPT to search for a file containing this text. Just as before, I'll have to click on the link and confirm this operation. It finds a few files that match my search term. Now I'll ask it to send me those files URLs in Slack. Once again, I'll need to confirm the action. And now I've got the link in Slack. With all of the required approvals, the process doesn't necessarily save that much time, but it does prevent me from needing to open up multiple different apps. Setting up several actions will definitely make your Zapier plugin in ChatGPT much more useful. Exciting new AI tools and use cases are emerging every day. New options like the Zapier plugin for ChatGPT are still in the early days of development, but they hold tremendous potential. It might be a bit clunky today, but with a plugin like this, we're seeing the beginnings of a legitimate virtual AI assistant that can find files, send messages, and perform all sorts of productive tasks. Give it a try and let us know what you think. And if there's any other ChatGPT plugins you want us to cover on the channel, just let us know. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human. Like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, you can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. If you'd like to start automating your company's workflows with AI, Zapier, and the tools you already use, you can book a free 15-minute consultation with our team. You can find all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, don't forget, keep the flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.